Today we're taking a look at Big Buck World, the arcade one-up cabinet. This is one of two different variations currently out there on the market today. Buyers also have the option of purchasing this machine with a different Big Buck Hunter Pro artwork package through various different retailers. All the games and core remains are the same and different artwork and slightly different pricing is really all that separates those two machines. I personally have purchased this machine directly through Arcade One Up's online web store and paid the asking price of $500. This machine is the first arcade cabinet that Arcade One Up has released where the included games make use of light guns and step away from the traditional joysticks and buttons input experience. The machine comes with two bright safety colored light gun rifles, the guns are made of plastic and feel to be around the same build quality as your standard Nerf gun. Each gun has two input sources, a trigger of course, and a reloading pump action feature. Arcade 1UP teamed up with Sindon Light Guns to utilize their unique technology. The gameplay screen is surrounded by a white border on all four sides of the game, and at the end of each rifle there is a small camera that reads the square box displayed on the screen, and that is how this gun functionally knows how and where you are aiming while you are playing the game. Overall, the light gun rifles included here work exceptionally well on the built-in games, and I found them to be consistently accurate, allowing me to make very precise shots. While the PC experience when using the Sindon light guns and their software allows users the ability to customize the thickness and color of the surrounding border sensor, you don't have those same options on this Big Buck World cabinet from Arcade One Up, so you won't be able to make any modifications to the on-screen border at all. Speaking firsthand though, I find the white border really is barely noticed once you're actually engaged in playing these games. The 17-inch LCD screen that we've come to expect from Arcade One Up releases thus far is again used on this cabinet as well. The 3D graphics of the Big Buck series looks good on this monitor, colors are vibrant, and there's no issue with washout from side viewing angles. I do wish a larger monitor would have been used here in this instance though. 17 inches is perfectly fine when you're right next to the machine playing a game, but if you're standing several feet away from this machine as designed, 17 inches really begins to feel significantly small, especially if you're trying to be very precise with your shots. There are four included titles on this machine, Big Buck Hunter Pro, Big Buck Hunter Pro Open Season, Big Buck Safari, and Big Buck Safari Outback. Each game has several treks that a player can choose that offers further choice options surrounding the type of wildlife they wish to hunt down. Players can also select to play only the bonus rounds and there are various options allowing you to play one to four players either sharing a single gun or you can choose to compete side by side using both guns. The amount of treks and missions available within each title as well as the inclusion of the bonus round mode really give this machine loads of replay value, as it'll take quite some time for users to complete every single mission within each one of these games. System menu options can be found when you hold down the player 1 and 2 start buttons down for a few seconds. Once accomplished, you'll have the option of changing a few settings. You can remove the big buck girls who are commonly seen walking around on screen during the games and the cutscenes. The default skill level is set to normal, but you also have the option of changing it to easy, which makes it to where the player no longer has to use that pump reload between shots. The game itself doesn't change how it plays, but gamers will essentially have a semi-automatic rifle with infinite ammo if they choose to select the easy mode. You can also calibrate the accuracy of the rifles in the gun calibration menu. High scores for each individual game and trek can be viewed as well, and you can also erase them should you wish to in this menu. And if you find yourself wishing to reset all the settings back to the original factory, well you can do that here as well. In terms of cabinet design, Arcade 1UP did a nice job of recreating some of the specific details of the original full-size arcade cabinet. Side panels have a unique shape and notch pattern towards the front. The control deck itself features similar design elements as the full-scale arcade, in which the gun colors, the single centralized speaker, and the holstering of the rifles inside the machine have been recreated nicely in this scaled-down machine. Though there is only one single speaker, sound clarity is still nice and overall loudness the user can set the speaker volume levels to is more than enough to fill a noisy room with ease. The marquee itself is a raised piece of wood that intentionally stands taller than the cabinet sides to simulate the look of a mounted pair of deer antlers. It certainly would have been nice though if this machine came with a marquee that did light up, especially at this price point. At the very least, I wish they would have went with something that had more of a three-dimensional depth added to the marquee that made the antler stand out for the rest of the marquee itself. One thing worth noting is that since you store the rifles inside the cabinet body, you'll want to make sure not to force the guns any further than they really need to go, as there's no physical piece that prevents you from pushing the gun all the way inside to where it hits the base floor of the machine. Smashing the end of the gun where the Sendon light gun camera is located into the base of the machine will no doubt have negative impacts on the longevity of operations, so be careful how you handle it. There is, however, one nice safety feature in use with this machine. Each rifle is connected to a breakaway cable at the control deck. 
So if you get too far away from the machine, the cable will simply detach at this point, and you don't run the risk of toppling the machine over from pulling on the gun cables. Since these games are much more graphically advanced than your average Pac-Man cabinet, Arcade 1UP has utilized a more robust PCB set up inside this arcade cabinet that includes a small fan for cooling. During the initial startup of this machine, and at very low game volumes, you will no doubt be able to hear the faint whir of that fan spinning. Not an issue, mind you, but merely an observation worth noting to anyone out there who might be shocked when they turn on their respective machine for the first time. Gameplay was very smooth during my time exploring all the different themes and areas this game had to offer, and I only noticed a few minor frame rate hiccups occurring at random times. When these slowdowns did occur, they quickly resolved themselves, and the entire incident would last a mere second or two tops. Overall, I think this is a great first shot, pun intended, of Arcade 1UP dipping their toes into the light gun arcade world. The rifles are responsive and very accurate thanks to the inclusion of the send-in technology, and overall the gameplay experience playing these more graphically intensive, newer arcade games was a positive one. It gives me lots of hope and faith that whatever future light gun games Arcade 1UP sets their sights on will be well within their range. I really have had a blast playing the Big Buck World Arcade 1UP cabinet. I'm not even a hunter or an outdoorsman and I really still have fun playing these games. The accuracy and the precision of the send-in technology is leading class in my opinion, so you really can't go wrong with that. Build quality on the guns, again, like I said, it feels like a you know a standard plastic Nerf gun. If you dropped it from six feet onto a concrete floor, it'll probably break, but again, that would be the same case for a standard Nerf gun, so that really wouldn't be shocking to me, so don't just go throwing these around. But overall, they do feel good enough. I don't think like adults are going to have any issues with it. The gun itself is 26 inches long. As you can see, it fits on my shoulder. I've got long, lanky gorilla arms, and I can still comfortably hold this gun. The only wear point that this might potentially run into would be the pump handle and a you know little side avenue around that. If you're really worried about the longevity of the pump handle and you're worried about breaking it, well, you can go into the menu system, turn it on to easy mode, and you don't ever actually have to use that pump action ever again, and you could just sit there and blast away with infinite ammo. So keep that in mind. Now, if you're a taller person, if you're the type of person that's constantly getting cats out of trees for the local fire department, you're gonna have to make some slight considerations as far as how you play this game. So I'm six foot two. You can stand very close to this machine up to about 12 inches and it registers your input, um, which is great and everything, but the taller you are, the more angled down you're gonna be finding yourself because the screen is straight up and down. It's not slanted back any whatsoever. So the taller you are, then the closer you are to the screen, you're going to find yourself shooting down the barrel like this. And if you really want that level shot and playing field, you're going to have to either back up, which makes the screen incredibly small, or you're going to have to, you know, sit down on a stool or a chair or something like that. So keep that in mind if you're a very tall person. In terms of modding capabilities, because people always ask me those questions, if you're thinking you're going to buy this cabinet, throw a PC in there, load it up with a bunch of light gun games, and just simply connect these you know, big buck world controllers, light gun rifles to that PC and it's gonna work, that's not gonna be the case. Even if you buy like a little adapter dongle here that's meant to replace the little breakaway cable here, again, this, this is not gonna help you. Even if you use the existing cable removed from the cabinet because it does have a USB end that goes into the PCB and you plug that into a computer, it's not gonna recognize this as a send-in light gun. It's gonna recognize this as essentially a webcam. So yes, it works, but it won't be recognized by the send-in software. So I plug this in, send-in software does not recognize this as a light gun. And you know, on the opposite end of that spectrum, here is an actual send-in light gun. If I plug this into the Big Buck World cabinet, it doesn't recognize it either. So either way you go, you're not gonna be able to swap or just simply plug and play this into a modular PC light gun setup. If you want a modded cabinet with all this type stuff, you're just gonna have to essentially buy the real deal, send in light guns, and plug it into a PC that way. But anyways, that is it for today's review. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, make sure you hit that like button, share this video with your friends if you found the information helpful. And as always, thanks for watching, guys. It really means a lot.